Hello and welcome to System Software Part 4, where today we're going to look at managing the user, managing files and managing peripherals. Again, these are all key functions of an operating system. So let's start with user management. The typical home computer will allow different login accounts for a number of users, each with their own settings and applications. The operating system will generally allow for a number of users to be set up with their own accounts, security, and individual settings. So that's something that you can see here. You can see we've got an administrator account that has lots of user access. We've got a guest account, which would have less access, and other different accounts. And this is something familiar with. We usually log on to a computer system, especially at school or the workplace and different people will have different access to different files and folders and can see different things after they've logged on. The operating system keeps this kind of data secure and private with what we call user access rights. Each user account is assigned permission to do certain things or see certain files. Users are given a username and password to identify them. When they log in, the operating system will know what permissions they have and will restrict them accordingly. So if the manager of a company logs in, they can see different files and folders. They've got different options than if one of the less important employees logs in. In the same way that if a network administrator logs in, they can do a lot more things with the operating system on the computer than just a regular user. The three common access rights that you need to know are read, which is the ability to view and open files or folders, but not change them. Write, which allows a file or a folder to be modified, including deleting, and execute, which gives the user the right to execute or run an executable program. On a network, user management is particularly important because you're not dealing with just one computer, you're dealing with access to shared files and folders throughout the system. So I'll give you a definition here. Network user management is the administrative feature of a computer system to control user access into a network. So again, if you're doing an exam and you're asked to define user management, that's a really good definition that'll get you your marks. So really, it allows an administrator to add, amend, or delete user details on a network. So for example, again, with a business or a school or a university, all those users have to be added to get access to the network. Sometimes they need to be changed. Sometimes when people leave, they need to be deleted so they don't have continuing access to the system. So for example, a group called students might be able to view the student's shared area on a network but not make any changes to files in that folder. Whereas a group called teachers can view the shared area and also add and delete files. So for a lot of you, that's going to sound very familiar with your own secondary school activities. Moving on, we're going to look at another important job of the operating system, file management. So we don't mean this kind of file, we are, of course, remaining electronic files and folders like this. So we know the computer stores data on lots of secondary storage devices in files which are held in folders. The operating system is responsible for storing and retrieving those files. The operating system has to provide facilities to manage these files. So you've got to let the users move the files, delete them, rename them, things like that. Again, the actual data, the ones and zeros, is held on secondary storage. But the way we, the user, have of accessing that data, of moving it and changing it, that is provided by the operating system. The operating system manages the secondary storage, dividing it into identifiable areas so the location of each file can be stored in an index. So again, that means the information can be stored quickly and we can get to it and we understand where everything is. And again, how we understand things, now the computer understands things are a little bit different and the operating system just has to be there just to sit in the middle and make sure everything works the way that it should. 
So storage is usually organized on a hierarchical basis. You know, you've got your disk drive, you've got some folders, you've got folders inside the folders, you might have more files and folders inside of those. And again, we've got this hierarchical level based system. And you go down and down and down until you get to the file that you want. So again, nice definition for file management, a system that is used by the operating system to organize and keep track of files. Again, when you're doing an exam, you've got to make sure you're using the right terminology, the right phrases to show the person marking the exam that you know what you're talking about and you deserve the best grades. So another job, peripheral management. Peripheral devices are essential for a computer system for things like input, output, and data storage. So these are the kind of extra devices that we plug into our system, things like monitors, printers, keyboards, mice, all that sort of thing. These devices need to communicate with the rest of the computer system. Definition. Peripheral management allows the computer's external devices to communicate with the computer system. This communication is controlled by signals produced by what we call device drivers, sometimes called hardware drivers. Programs that enable the computer devices to communicate with the computer and more specifically to communicate with the operating system. Device drivers are required for each peripheral and are generally written by the device manufacturer to provide a generic device or provided by generic device drivers by the operating system. So let's imagine you're a company, you've released a new printer that has to work with, say, Windows PCs. So you need to write a little bit of software, some lines of code, and this code can be loaded into the operating system and allow the operating system and the printer to talk to each other. Sometimes, maybe somebody like Microsoft will provide a generic driver, and this will work for, say, any printer, any one of a series of printers. And that's built into the operating system to allow it to communicate with different printers. Of course, usually it's better if you've got the one by ABC Company that's specifically written, you might get more features, it might work a bit faster, it'll be a bit more finely tuned. This is especially true when you're working for things like graphics cards, where really performance is very important. If you're talking about things like, say, a mouse or a keyboard, generic drivers are usually fine. But again, you need this special software just to allow the operating system to communicate with the peripheral in the right way. These device drivers take care of the peripherals, so the application programmers need not concern themselves with the detail of each device they are using. So if you think about that, you go to Microsoft Word, you press print, you wanted to print out. You don't want the person using who's programmed Microsoft Word to have to say, right, I have to add code for thousands and thousands of different printers into Microsoft Word so that it knows how to print. And then you have to do that for Excel. You have to take the same code and put it in Excel. And the same code and put it in PowerPoint. Thousands and thousands of printers. And then what happens if somebody releases a new printer? It's going to get really complicated. Your Microsoft Word is not going to be mostly word processing code. It's mostly going to be device drivers. So we want the operating system to take care of that. We want the operating system to take care of all the device drivers and to handle all that interaction between the hardware and the application so we, the user, don't have to worry about it. This way, the application needs simply to pass on a request to the driver, via the operating system, of course, which will then translate into code specific for that device. So the driver knows how to communicate to this keyboard or that keyboard or another keyboard. Okay, We don't have to worry about that. Each keyboard will have its own driver. It knows how to communicate. That specific code has already been written. The device drivers are specific not only to the device, but also to the operating system. So this is a key point. A printer will require different device drivers if it is used on the Apple Mac from those required if used on a Windows-based system. So for each computer operating system you want your device to work with, you need to release a specialized driver.
So you'll need one for Windows, one for Mac OS, one for Linux. The drivers are not compatible with different operating systems. They need to be specially written. That's why it's often very useful to be a Windows user. It's the most popular operating system for PCs and laptops, so there are lots of drivers available. If you're using a more obscure operating system, sometimes it's a bit more challenging to track down the right driver to work with your peripherals. So most operating systems allow the user to make minor modifications to the way the peripheral behaves. The device manager utility allows the user to change settings such as the display settings for a monitor or the display, the graphical settings for a graphics card or something similar. So if you think about a printer, I was setting up a printer today. I got to decide, is it single sided or double sided? Does it default to black and white? Does it default to color? Is it going to be automatically A4, A3, or A5? There are lots of different settings, different types of print qualities that I can determine, and I can do that by changing the settings, which is, allows the device driver to communicate with the printer and give me exactly what I'm looking for. So just one example. So today we've covered some of the main key functions of an operating system. We've looked at managing users. We've looked at managing files, and we've looked at peripheral management. In the next set of lectures, we're going to look at different utilities that we need for our computers. So have a very pleasant day, and good luck with your studies.